Oh well, yeah, Loop is yeah, like yeah, oh, and that's that's all there is to it. It's just one of those little towns. It's got a lifestyle all its own. You're comfortable. You're not rushed. You know everyone that lives within the area. You have a lot of trust in. It's a very close community built on extended families. It's a good community for the kids to grow up in. You know your neighbours. You know people at the shops. You know you know everyone, and everyone looks out for everyone. It's just the community actually recognises you as a being. In your loop, everyone's got their own little space, but they want you in it as well. It's a small community, the kids on the bikes going to school speak to you. What I've got here, I'll never get anywhere else. This is something that can't be replaced. But the loop is no longer an idyllic rural community. A proposed heavy industrial buffer zone has brought unforeseen change. Residents are questioning the town's future, and for some, their own. Three kilometres north of Yarloop is a wager up refinery. The refinery is operated by Alcoa World Alumina, a global enterprise which is 60% owned by Alcoa Inc, the world's 200th largest company. In the refinery what we do is we take bauxite that's mined in the Jarrah forest and then we use a very standard refining process that extracts the alumina from the bauxite which we then ship by rail to a port to be shipped to a smelter. In an aluminium smelter they take the alumina that we make and turn it into the bright shiny metal aluminium that many of us are familiar with. Nothing really changed until uh, yeah, 96. Once the liquor burner went up and uh, things started to happen, uh, people started to talk, people started to get uh, sick or affected by the emissions that were coming out from it. It took so many years for them to acknowledge there was a problem. There's been so much denial from the company and to actually acknowledge that there was a, there was a real problem, they, they acknowledged it and went out and hid it. Until the emissions from Alcoa became apparent, this town was, a, it was steadily growing. It slowly changed to the last, what, six, twelve months, maybe two years, to a point where it's virtually destroyed the town. Well, at Wager Up, we decided that we needed um, a buffer because we wanted to have better compatible use of land around the refinery. And so we've set this land management program in place that ensures Alcoa Wager Up's continued viability for the life of the refinery and which is linked to the success and growth of the community over the years. That's what started this whole issue. What is a buffer zone and why do they want it? Yeah. It doesn't stop the air travelling to carry anything. There's just a line on the map. That's all it is. There was an information meeting over at the cabin restaurant. They had a big uh, colour photo, aerial photo, with the buffer zone drawn in. And on the day I noticed that it was yellow and I referred to it as a line of pus right through the centre of town. And I told them that it was the worst possible option for Yali because it was right through the middle. You know, they come out and they did um, consultation, which involved them going from house to house to house, talking down to people and having secret meetings and stuff. It created a lot of distrust. I said, rather than you try and buy the town out, why don't you fix your problems? And leave, don't worry about the buffer. We found that many people in the community had widely varying views, and we did the best we could to try to pick the option that would meet everyone's needs overall the best. Again, the community's needs as well as Alcoa's needs. But we also realized as we were going through the consultation that we didn't see a way that was going to be able to please everybody. It will be very hard to say what they should have done. Um, it's easy to sit back and criticize, but you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. I think that that's the problem. They, they, they actually did something which has made some people happy but made other people angry. February 2002, 
Alcoa proposed a buffer around the refinery and started purchasing properties from the residents. The buffer went right through the town. We were afraid if we set the line all the way to the south of town that that would have meant that, you know, that it would have been much more difficult for the town to grow and for the town to remain viable. On the other hand, if we'd set the buffer line to the north of town, we um, did not feel that that would meet Alcoa's needs in terms of long-term overall compatible um, uh, land uses with the refinery. To actually go and put a buffer in place and split a town was ludicrous. I just, I just can't believe that happened. There were people in what was then called Area A were in a different uh, set of circumstances to Area B. They were able to sell their house plus a percentage on the top, whereas the people in Area B basically could sell their house, so that's it. So it created two classes of people. We were splitting off. Right, it's all right for you, Mick. You're going to get 35%, but well, we're going to get 35%. Uh, turn the people against each other. That was the saddest aspect of all. There were those who thought they were going to get uh, filthy rich and uh, those who thought they were being uh, deprived. The community spirit had gone because the, the bubble had broken and then it was, shit, look after number one here. Somebody yeah. likened it to a bomb going off and it's already shattered everything. The dreams, the aspirations, the, um, the whole idyllic lifestyle. Yeah, it's, they've destroyed it. They, uh, and this was a very happy little town. One of the biggest changes that you can notice is um, the, the town's basically divided at the moment. There's people sick of hearing about Alcar and the people that are whinging and saw so that split and the A zone like the, the buffer zone compared to the other zones, probably another split. Alcoa does see that there have been social impacts within the town of Yarloop. Um, we realize that as um, some people have sold their homes to Alcoa and left town and other people have moved in, that that kind of uh, shift in the population is a, is a major change for people and that people uh, need support and need time to adjust to those kind of changes. People are worried about their health, their kids, the future, where they're going to go once they sell. Yeah, there's a hell of a lot of changes. The neighbours are going, people that you knew um, to say good day to when you went down the street, they're not there anymore. There's empty houses. Um, it actually looks forlorn. Divided, uncertain, depressive, down, stressed out. Nobody knows. Nobody knows what they're going to go, what they're going to do. I can see being an outsider, a distress and the, and the anguish, what they're under, which a lot of them know they're under stress and anguish, but a lot of people don't know they're under stress and anguish or what's happening, but I can see it from being an outsider now. You, you're not in control of your own destiny, you know, you're not in control of the value of your house or how it's affected or what happens to it. The town's still here but there's gaps in the town now and there's a line through the town that's, that's um, been drawn by Alcoa. It's a, something that Alcoa did in reaction to the vocal minority and the press. They had to be seen to do something and, and drawing a big red line on a map were really something good to do. The old car problem's there, but I think it's just been blown out of proportion a lot due to the money and the arguing and the, the, yeah, the conflict. And you got more money than me and I didn't get enough yeah. money. And a lot of people have the attitude that um, if it happens here, blame, you know, blame it on El Cara because it's their fault. Well, um, I, I think that's um, you know, pretty poor because people are looking for an easy way out, um, you know, to a problem. You pretty much well know now who are the very anti Elko and who are the yeah. for Elko people, so you just... You know who to mention you and don't, know who not to mention. You just don't talk time. about it. While there are divisions in the town, everyone has been affected by the proposed buffer. Change is now inevitable for Yarloop. If you say, well, you know, they've ignored us for 17 years, we've got 17 years worth of change coming up in, say, 
two or three. If suddenly you come over the horizon with nothing but change and bad news of one sort or another, that there's going to be a large body of opinion in that town that looks at you and says, why don't you just bugger off? You go out to a social do and the first yeah. thing you hear about is it's people Alcoa. talking about Alcoa yeah. Yeah. and it's just, it, forget it's, about it's, it. You go really, out and enjoy yourself. Yeah. There's more to life than yeah. worrying about Alcoa. It's not affecting me other than life's not as nice as it used to be. And, and that's the main thing I came here for, were a better lifestyle and, and now we're getting the stress back into life again. I don't like the stress in life. I like a nice, quiet, easy life. But I can see that it's, it's going to have to get changed and I'm going to have to put the thing into another gear and try to do something to help this town. Really. Financially it's probably put us in front with 35% on top of market value but I wouldn't say it's affected us at all. The buffer zone's affected us because it's devalued our land because nobody wants to buy um, a nice tranquil little property like this, a rural property, if it's next to something that could be a major health concern. Directly or indirectly, they are controlling our future. We've really got two options. We can live in this town under their control or we can get out. And while that's not forcing you, it's probably not giving you the option that you want. If I was to put a cage around your homeland and fill your house with smoke, how would, how would you feel? We've got the uh, so-called option of staying or going, but that doesn't apply because uh, when they put restrictions on there and you have a health risk over your head and they, and they can't guarantee it's not going to affect you, then you're forced to leave. And that's the way it's affected me and I guess everybody else that lives in the buffer zone. In effect, they've stolen my legacy to my children. This land is zoned residential development and it represents a considerable uh, value-added uh, prospect for them in the future. The, and I, I resent having that uh, legacy stolen from me. Four lots of nearest neighbours, ourselves and three others, three have been built within the last eight years. To me that's really stupid. Why did they let us build? If now they're turning around and saying, hey, you're too close. Why didn't our car be looking over the back fence eight years ago and say, hey, there's a problem. Hey, they've made a mistake in hindsight, but now they're gathering us into their mess and we shouldn't be gathered into their mess. They made the mistakes, they need to fix them. I know, or what I've heard around town, that some of the businesses are having a hard time due to people, well, there is a lot of families shifted out of town, so obviously they're going to start losing a bit of money. take 17, 18% of the people away from you, you've got to expect to go down about the same percentage in your business. One bloke reckons they're down 40%, another bloke says about 25 now Just what ours are, I don't know, but we are down. After the proposed buffer, people had to decide whether to stay or to go. put it as an option in your life that you think you're going to be there forever and suddenly it becomes a reality that one maybe you should move let alone can or cannot move it's quite scary to have that opened up to people this was my life this is what I was seeing that we were staying and there's a big blanket that's been dropped there now and I can't see beyond it I don't know what to do I've, my family's so close Eric's family's so close do we Take that stumps and move on. I don't know. We don't have the choice as to whether we um, can sell to anybody. We only have one buyer. We don't have the choice as to whether we stay or go, some of us, because... We didn't want the choices. Well, this is it. We didn't need the choices. We were quite happy here. Yeah. As it is. Well, what can you do? I mean, you can't stay. I don't want to leave. Where do I go? The people in zone a who have wanted to move have gone. Uh, the ones who are still here don't want to move and they want Alcoa to clean up their act. Uh, that's the effect that Alcoa has had on the town. If the peace and tranquility is taken from me, tranquility being 
most of it. I'm not afraid of a fight, and size doesn't matter. I intend to stay, but if I have to leave, it's going to cost a lot more than money. If we want to accept their choice, then we can stay in town. But if we want the freedom of choice, well, we've only got one option, and that's to get out. I don't know what the answer is. For us, it'll be to leave, I think and just look back on Yarloop as the happy times that we had and try and get rid of the last 12 months. Mm. It's not as if there's a hard and fast problem. Some people have a problem with emissions, some people don't. It's not a blanket thing. It affects different people in different ways and it doesn't affect some people. And if people are affected, they're being given the opportunity to get away from that effect. And then the ones that stay will be okay. People have told us that they felt they've had to leave, but our proposal was put in place to allow people in the area closest to the refinery the choice of whether they wanted to leave or not. So we tried to make it an offer that was good enough to allow them to relocate to comparable housing wherever they would like to. And we also put other things in place, such as this community development fund, to make the community more attractive and a really good place to live for people who wanted to stay. So we have no intention of forcing people to leave town. In fact, we'd prefer that people would stay. I don't think I want to sell my house, so I don't see that there's a real effect on me, financially or otherwise. And we've built here and the kids are happy and we're happy and that's about all it boils down to. If there was a... Um any concern or anything happen due to health, due to health. we wouldn't yeah yeah we would, we go. would go straight away i moved out i would say a bit premature because i was i say i went into panic mode basically i was in the thing for shit i better move now get my house sold to alcoa while the going's good get out of the place because if they do a backflip and don't buy it the whole world knows we've got a problem in your loop so nobody i want to come and live in your loop on our hindsight, I wish I'd have stayed, to be honest. And I wish the whole community had stuck together and said, I know, we're going to stay here. If it had all stayed and done something different, the whole outcome would have been different. So, what is the future for Yaru? In or out of the loop? You can see that you know, some people are still angry. Um, some people are sort of looking forward to the future, um, you know, to try and get projects off the ground and whatnot. And then um, I suppose you've got a, a third group that are just, um, you know, still sounding their negatives to to try and um, push the problem along a bit further, I guess. There is a morale problem in a, in, a, in Yalu, which is, I think, quite understandable and that, that problem gets worse every day. If we don't maintain infrastructure that's here now or we don't have the support of the population then the town's future is very, very fragile. It was a very tight knit with close nucleus of a family sort of community and that's not going to be there. A lot of those families are going, uh, they're not going to replace them. We've been on committees, we've been on sports groups, all sorts of stuff over the years and we're really disappointed that it's come to this for us. You know, we probably would have stayed in this community at least another 10 years, I think. Every day you speak to somebody and all we talk about is what's happening. Does anybody know? Is anything progressing? Is there any, any um, future for the people that are still here. None of us know, none of us know. The company is only buying property, they're not buying business. So really got problems about looking at business in any way at all. The problem from the business perspective is to survive the transition. And if that takes two or three years, then you could see um, the business here or there close the doors. There was a big forward move happening and I see that it's just suddenly all come to a standstill and those of us who are committed to our properties and have to keep on going because we've put a lot of money in and if we 
just stop and go, oh, there's no point anymore because of Alcoa or because of the uncertainty. All that money and all that effort's wasted. They've now set something in motion that they can't stop. It's going to be a lot of recovery work to recover a town. At the moment, you know, this place is pretty fragmented, so we've got to try and drag everybody back in and get a few positives going and show that, you know, we can exist alongside Delcoa and, and safely as well. You know. We're willing to put the effort in. And if other people put the effort in, that's what I mean about people making the difference. Things will happen. Things can only get better. If people start doing something, then at least we could focus on a few positives instead of walking around with our chins down on our chest all the time. And let's make sure there are changes that the people of Yarloop can live with. I don't want to see a situation where unwelcome changes are getting forced on people. It's not a case of doing a lot of work to, to rebuild you know, the town because, I mean, the town hasn't disappeared. It's, it's basically, there's a lot of work to be done to actually re, rebuild the community spirit. It's not an easy thing that's going to be done overnight. It's going to take lots of listening on both sides and some hard work. I don't think they're ever going to change up there. So that line's there and that side gets it and that side doesn't. So people have just got to learn to live with it. The ones who have really got a problem are going to move because they're being given the opportunity to move because they've said they've got a problem. The feelings of my friends in Yarloop who live in the buffer is very much the same. Clean it up or close it down, but no buffer because we don't care how many corporate dollars go down the tube, clean it up or close it down. And they've been manipulating people's lives really is what it boils down to by their policies. If Alcoa really wants to learn something from this whole exercises that they should have looked at what they were doing and listened to what people were saying. Yeah, there's a few figures floating around. They're going to spend a million dollars on the hospital. They're going to try and do this, upgrade that. That's dollars we're talking about. What about the human element? What about the people who are actually hurting, who don't want to leave and yet have to sell because uh, they're all worried about their health, they're worried about their children? What about them? That's what leads me to believe that they're not serious about that, uh, solving the problems here or saving the town. We believe that as part of the community and as the, a major industry in the area um, who is wanting to change the use of the of the land in Area A, that we have a responsibility to work with the community and make the community remain a, a viable place to live. What they've got to do is come out in this town and earn people's respect, not buy it. And that's what they can't see, you know. They're trying to buy our respect and they'll never get it. It's just about desperation stage where it would be really nice to see somebody just do something, even if it turned out to be not quite the right thing, but at least something's getting done. I don't believe I'll co serious about trying to help the town and its people. I think they've used this town as guinea pigs in an experiment that has failed horribly. Maybe if anything's learnt is that this will never happen to another community in this state or anywhere around the world. There's been too much rhetoric, no action. They haven't touched on the real issues, and that's the, the people issue. The sad thing about the whole lot of this is really no one has benefited, or very few people have benefited out of the whole thing. People in town are upset and disgruntled and moving out away from friends and neighbours and a whole society is going, and Alcoa haven't got their third stage. You know, you have to... Look at the hard fact, uh, the refinery is not going to go away, but then again neither is your loop. So they better learn to get on together. No one wants alcohol to shut their doors, that's what I'm hearing. But they would like to work in harmony with alcohol and to have the same lifestyle that they've had before they come here. Uh, obviously that's a problem because of the way they've addressed the issues with the people here. It's not an easy process for people to go through. and. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to think that we'll get there. If they could go back to their drawing board and come up with something that's concrete and address the issues that actually are hurting the people, then there could be a chance of some sort of harming uh, being restored. There might be a chance for a new Yalu, but it's got a big question mark over it.
as a town comes to grips with massive change, the question remains, will there be a future for those who are left? <laughs>